Good morning. Welcome to those gathered with us today and those joining us on Zoom. Uh, blessings to all of you. Greetings and blessings to you in the name of our risen Lord. Happy Easter. We are still in the Easter season as we journey the 50 days to Pentecost, which we will celebrate May 19th. We gather this beautiful morning to, to celebrate Christ's victory over death and the grave, and we give thanks for the power of the resurrection born in us through the waters of our baptism. We continue, though, with uh, the jubilant cry, Christ is risen, alleluia, Christ is risen, alleluia. What a joy it is to be Easter people that is living on this side of the resurrection, knowing of God's love shown to us and all of creation in Christ's life, death. I better get out of the bright light. Yes, yeah, shouldn't I? So you can read the screen. Shown to us and all of creation in Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Joined, amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our whole life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for the oceans and lakes, for the rivers, and streams, honor to you for the waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nourish both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin, all that separates us from you. Strengthening our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment, where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We will read Psalm 1 responsibly. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Our reading this morning is taken from the first chapter of Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. <laughs> holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory, Glory to you. Lord. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. There were, they were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now 
They know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of this world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are, are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them. And I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one, the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now, but now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. In themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Welcome. Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a wonderful text, our Gospel text from John this morning. This text is part of a five-chapter portion of John, which is uh, referred to oftentimes as Jesus's farewell discourse. He, he's up in the upper room that thir the Thursday night before his uh, uh, being arrested, turned over to the authorities. Five chapters, John goes in telling stories of his time with the disciples. And this reading this morning captures the idea, uh, captures Jesus's prayer about the disciples. He's praying for the disciples his followers, his friends, his family, his enemies as well. Wow, to pray in that way, knowing the, the uh, future, Jesus, knew, joy, Jesus knowing of what was going to happen, to spend time reflecting and praying for others. It's a really powerful, really powerful text, praying for others, deep in prayer. We often find Jesus in the gospel text, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John praying. While on my leave, I had a chance to travel to Central Asia. I think this map shows you where Central Asia is and what is sort of defined as Central Asia. I was in this region here, in this region here, Mongolia, China. We see Nepal, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Russia, Ukraine. This is the region I spent some time. Next slide, please. I had the opportunity to travel with National Geographic on what was uh, a portion of what's called the Silk Road uh, in the countries here of Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, uh, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. This is um, a portion of the Silk Road, the Silk Road extending from China eventually all the way to, to Europe. Actually, it's not really a road, but a route. There's lots of trails and roads meandering uh, east and west. And then also later on, were incorporated shipping channels as well, shipping lanes, et cetera. So it was a, a matter of a network of getting product from one location to another. It started 200 years, um, 200 years BCE before the Common Era and lasted till about 1,000 years in the Common Era. So hundreds and hundreds of years. And as you can well imagine, it, it morphed, it changed over time. Uh, ideas were shared, cultures were shared along this, along this time, as well as my favorite, recipes were shared, food and uh, other sorts of things. There was exchange, an exchange of ideas, inventions, solutions. 
people interacted along this time through these hundreds of years, you can well imagine that empires were rising and falling. Next slide, please. My journey. Modern day, it comes, this area comes with lots of history, uh, hundreds and hundreds of years of history, but the modern day has these countries uh, apart now from the Soviet Union, which had its fall, collapse, if you will, in 1991. And so these countries are emerging from this time, trying to establish, trying to find themselves who they were, thousands of years of history, who they were, and who they are now. They take into account as they're trying to establish themselves as people and as a nation, their historical context, their traditions over thousands of years, but also in the current day context, their mineral wealth, uranium. When I was in uh, Kazakhstan, there that, that week they were having an international conference for uranium um, international diplomats with regard to uranium. Kazakhstan has the largest resources of uranium in the world. Water is also an issue. If you have water, you have irrigation, you have crops. If you don't have water, you got to partner with your neighbor, figure out how to obtain water. Turkmenistan has lots and lots of oil. They're dripping in oil where the other countries don't. You get the idea that these different countries have different resources and things that they have uh, explored and established in the here and now so they're blending what they had and what they have to sort of searching for a personal and a national identity, present and looking forward into the future. We as worshipers here at Christ the King, people participating in ministry are too on a journey, a journey of discovery as well, I think. Is that right? Are we not exploring or are we not? Well, throughout life, we're always doing that. But I mean, we're, we're very intentional about this. But one other thing also is make no mistake. We do know who we are. We have an identity. We know who we are and whose we are. Beloved children of God. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Yeah. Beloved children of God. Our identity is wrapped up in that. And that's a beautiful thing. And God's saving grace. God's love that we've come to know through Christ's life, birth, life, death, and resurrection, and ascension. We're children of God, called to love one another, called to love ourselves and to love one another. Guided by the Holy Spirit, our faith and belief are formed by the scripture, of course, the Bible. Also by tradition and the prophets and your own personal experience. We know as individuals and as a group that we are indeed loved by our creator, showered with love and called to live into our identity, to caring and caring for others, caring for self and for others. We know who we are, yeah. Reminding ourselves of that often is a, is a good thing. And with that said, CTK, Christ the King Lutheran Church, as a congregation has been loved, is loved currently in the present, and will continue to be loved by gracious and loving God. And we are living out that love past, present, and future. We here in this room today stand on the shoulders of giants who have gone on before us, the saints, those who live in our hearts and those who go unnamed, the countless individuals. This congregation in particular has had a long, beautiful, wonderful history. Lots of joys and challenges, of course, but lots and lots of powerful ministry and still has powerful ministry here today. Always reflecting on where God is calling us. And I think over the last few years that we've been more intentional about reflection during these times of interim uh, transitions, what does it mean to live out in the community, live out our faith in the community? We're, we're wrestling with that. To live out our community of faith in the Fremont area, this given the fact that we, <laughs> I'll speak for us all in here, we all have been changing 
We were not, weren't the same people we were 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. We are changing it. So what does that call mean to us as individuals and as the congregation changes in the context of the bigger community? What does it mean to live out that? Exploring that, thinking about that. The call to respond to God's love for us. Noting, of course, that God has equipped us. We're ready for whatever God would like us to do and calls us to do. It's not like, okay, I'll go out and do this, uh, but you better be, better be supplying me with all the, the tools or the resources. God has equipped us and calls us, he equips us beforehand. Here again, our ministry, the ministry here at Christ the King, of, of course, has been going on. Y'all have been active in that in so, so many ways. In addition to that, there's, an, there's been an ad hoc team that was formed oh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, I think Alan made comment on that last week uh, during the announcements time. Uh, they've been meeting regularly, especially these last few months. We have um, Joe on the committee, uh, Jim on the committee, Alan, Peggy, Chris, and Pat and myself. And we've been discussing and praying, planning and discerning lots and lots of conversations in the group, but with you, some of you as well, and then also other avenues were, that are, we're exploring about what ministry might look like, where God is calling us in this Fremont area. And with the changes, the conversations about what this ministry will, will look like, not only today, but in the weeks and months and years ahead, responding to God's love for us as, indiv as individuals as we go through changes and, the great, and um, a as a community of believers, as a community of faith, as we the community goes through, through uh, changes. Where is God calling us? How is God calling us to share the good news in Jesus Christ with one another and the greater community? Guided by the Holy Spirit, our journey on this third rock from the sun continues. Back to the gospel. As Jesus prayed for his followers, his friends, his family, and enemies, and the, and the circumstances with which they were in, we too should be praying as we journey for ourselves and for our friends and family and enemies. I throw in the word enemies, but what I'm talking about is maybe those sort of folks we struggle with. We don't see eye to eye. There's a lot to pray for. Our prayers can take the form of gratitude. We can pray for others, for discernment, for guidance. We can, maybe I should rephrase that. We should pray for, for others and for discernment, for guidance, for, for clarity, for mindful um, mindfulness, awareness of how we can respond, being open to where God will call us and how God will call us. And also mindful, we, are, we too are prophets of a future, not our own. Sisters and brothers, as you pray, as you maybe have a conversation with God is a different way of putting that prayer. I don't know what your prayer life looks like and how it's constructed, but these conversations with God that you have, may you breathe in. May you breathe in the goodness of God and may you live out the goodness of God as you journey today, tomorrow, and all your days to come. Amen.
Let us join together now and profess our faith with reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. You sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. Send your church out into the world to spread your love and joy. Embolden all bishops, pastors, and deacons to be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation groans under the strain of pollution. Preserve melting glaciers and dwindling forests. Bolster those who work for climate justice and help us all to be good and faithful stewards of your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people seek wisdom understanding, and peace. Guide all those who govern and inspire them to work on behalf of the most vulnerable in our midst. Keep safe first responders, those serving in the military, and those whose duty it is to protect others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children need your loving care. Protect them from all harm. Comfort those in any affliction. Support those who grieve and bring solace to those who near death. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your spirit lives within us here. Inspire the work of this congregation and unite us as one. Bless all the mothers in our midst Console those for whom this day is difficult and gather us all under the care of your loving wings. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your saints dwell with you in light. Keep us ever thankful for those who have gone before us in faith. Inspire us by their witness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For whom else and what else do we pray? You may offer those prayers aloud or silently. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share God's peace with one another. God, provider of all we need, provides us an opportunity to share with one another what God has blessed us with. In being good stewards, we are called to give as God has given to us.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Please stand as you are able. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our joy, delight, and privilege, right and good to give you thanks and praise, O God, because from the beginning, you, you invited us on a journey with you, a journey of wonders and miracles, a journey of healing and joy, a journey of mystery, a journey full of life and love. And so in thanks and praise, we join our voices in the song of the angels and saints who forever sing to you. As they were gathered on the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, and gave thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus called God his Father so do we. Please pray in the language and translation of your heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today the daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Siblings in Christ, there is a place for you at the table of the Lord. The Feast of Communion is prepared for you. Know that you are loved. All are welcome to find their rest in Jesus Christ. All are welcome here. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated and come forward at the direction of the ushers. This morning we have wine, which is the darker colored liquid, and grape juice, the lighter. We also have gluten-free bread, if you would like. Simply ask the server, and it will be provided.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen you all your days to come. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Gracious God has blessed us with much. Right? God has blessed us with much. Today, we, what do we celebrate today? We celebrate uh, God's blessings, and we also celebrate Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. Celebrating those who are mothers, those who are motherly. Mother's Day often is thought of as a day to acknowledge and lift up female parents, if I can put it in those sorts of words. But mother as a noun also means a woman in authority, like Mother Teresa an older elderly woman like Mother Hubbard, or one exuding, practicing maternal tenderness or affection. A mother is many things. As a verb, mother, of course, is to give birth for humans to a child, but also and to care for others with love and compassion to mother. One of the many blessings by God is the gift of those providing motherly love, those extending God's love through word and action. Let us pray. Merciful and loving creator, on this day dedicated to honoring mothers, we thank you for the blessings of motherhood, those sharing love and compassion with those around them. We are grateful for mother's love, their strength and guidance in shaping our very lives. Continue to bless them with joy, peace, and love. May they always know of your goodness and presence in their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and forever. Amen.